Hallelujah. I hope everybody is doing good, enjoying summer finally. It's really hot here in Calgary. We're enjoying the weather. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'd like we start by praying. I feel in my heart we need to pray. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes wherever you are. We're just going to pray for today, conversation. For the Spirit of God to come. Father God, we give you praise. We ah, thank yes, you. Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your mysteries, mm. your mm -hmm. wisdom. I pray mm. that tonight you would download in us, God, your will, your ways, your thoughts. Father God, we lift up every person on this life following us. We pray, Father God, that you would enlighten them with revelation light as we discuss uh, the ways ah, of the here. kingdom. Father God, we thank you for your spirit to come among us and to minister to each one of us. Father God, I lift up Apostle as a asking questions, Father God, that you would give him the downloads from heaven. We thank you, mighty God, for your praises to come in our midst, God. Keep ah, ministering to us during this season, Father God. Make everything that's wrong so right. God, put a reset button in our spiritual being, in our spiritual DNA, a reset in areas of our lives, Father God, where we need your touch. Father God, we welcome you to come and mm. minister to us by your spirit. Give us food from heaven, mighty God. God, heal our hearts. Empower us, Father God. Restore us unto health, Father God. God, we thank you, we thank you for your spirit. He is here already in our midst. He is here already to minister to us. Yeah. He is here to speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, we are open today, God, to come to have a conversation with you, mm -hmm. Lord. Come and speak. Speak freely, mighty God. Be comfortable in this place. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you, mighty God. You know everyone's need. You know those following us. You know their need. You know the depths of their heart, Father God. Lord, I pray that you would touch them, that you would embrace them. God, that you will perform signs and wonders in their lives, Father God. Areas in their lives, Father God, where they have even forgotten, Father God, that they pray to you, that you would come, Father God, that you would answer their prayers, Father God, that the God of signs and wonders would manifest himself, Father God, in the areas of their lives, Father God. Lord, we call heaven to come upon ah, the earth. Papa, we call the answers of heaven to come on the earth. Even in this season of the pandemic, mighty God, mm. we pray that you would enlighten our eyes to see what you're doing, what you're about to do, Father God. God, we thank you for the new manifestation you, of your spirit in the earth mm. to come, Father God, and to manifest itself. Uh, in the lives of your people in this earth, mighty God. Lord, I pray for an awakening in the hearts of your people. For the more, the more of you, Father uh, God. Shaka. God, I pray that we may not be complacent, mighty God. Mm. That we would hunger and desire for more. Mm. Because there's always more yes, with you, mighty yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. God, we want the more. We uh, want the, the more. more. Mm. We want the more, yes, mighty Dios God. Maracota, yeah. Thank we you. want the more in our lives. Mm. We want the more in our lives, mighty God. Ah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Ah, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, ah, hallelujah. We give you praise. I feel this thing in my heart. Mm -hmm. I, I want to share with you. Mm -hmm. It has nothing with what our subject today, but I feel like to share it. It's mm -hmm. something I have experienced. Mm -hmm. And I want to minister to you as, mm -hmm. as I was praying, God, just, just download it in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe two or three days ago, I would just... I was just sleeping, and uh, and as I was sleeping, I had a, a dream. I had a dream 
there's something I've been praying to God for a long time, mm. for God to do in my in my life, mm. and uh, and I've tried so many times and it never worked out, mm. and uh, and I had a dream again. I just don't want to share specifically what it is. Seeing that very thing, I've been asking God for years, to seeing it coming to pass, Amen. and uh, out of my soul, I I say I say to God, can you please stop? tormenting me mm. because I've cried, I've believed, but it never worked out. For me, it's something I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to let it be. And uh, it reminded me the woman in the Bible, mm -hmm. when the prophet spoke to him and yes, said, the noble woman. you're going to, what do you want? Mm. And the prophet said, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, by this time next year, you're going to have a baby. So Mm -hmm. And this woman said, please, please, stop, 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 yes, yes. stop. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable mm -hmm. where I'm at. Yes. And I felt like there's areas in our lives where we have cried out to God. Yes. We have not seen the manifestation of the things we've been asking God so for years. And we don't want to even go she back there. Like, so yes. today I want to decree and declare yes. that those prayers you pray, yes. that you have not seen yes. the manifestation and you have given up. You say, mm -hmm. God, you know mm -hmm. what? I choose mm -hmm. to let it go. Mm -hmm. You have not brought mm -hmm. it to pass. I'm okay mm -hmm. with it. Yes. Like this woman yes. in the Old Testament, yes. I'm here to decree and yes. declare yes, that Lord. that very thing, yes, God is about to make yes, it happen. Lord. In, in your life, that it will not be a disappointment yes. anymore, yes. but you're going to see yes. the very thing that you have believed, Hallelujah. the very way that the angel of the Lord visited Hallelujah. Elizabeth. Mm. After all these years, yes. she had asked for a baby, mm. and Elizabeth has given up, yes. and the angel of the Lord came to Elizabeth mm. and said, yes. God has heard your prayers. Yes. Today, I'm here to tell you those things that you have even ah, forgotten about. Those things you say, God, I choose to accept. Mm. The things, the way they are, yes. I let it go. Yes. The desires, the prayers, mm. because I'm tired of believing. Yes. So I'm okay with it today. Mm. Today I want to awaken mm. again yes. that desire, that yes. dream inside yes. of you. I'm here yes. to declare that yes. God is about to show you in signs and Jesus. wonders in the earth, in, in your life, to bring Jesus. manifestation of yes. that very thing. You yes. are ready to give up. Do Asha not give Pala, up. Pala. Start again. Mm. Believe again. In Trust Jesus again. Yes. Because God wants to show mm. signs and wonders Amen. in your life. In the mighty name Amen. of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, you, welcome. Jesus. I felt mm. this in my spirit. Mm. I'm open to do whatever God wants Amen. to have conversation with the pastor. Amen. But we're going to let the Spirit of God minister Amen. to us, minister Amen. to his people. Amen. Today we want to minister life to you. Amen. We want to minister hope to you. Oh, we want to minister change to you. Mm. That God would come yes. and give you the very thing you have desired, yes. you have dreamed of. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 84, uh -huh. no good thing will he hold he those us. who love yes. him, those who walk mm. according to his Amen. ways, those who are in righteousness with Amen. him. No good Good thing will he withhold from you Amen. today? I decree and declare that every good thing is coming your way. Amen. Every good thing is coming from heaven In to your way. Because no good thing will In he withhold from you who love him, who serve In him. Name In the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, mm, God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, visit your mm. people. Visit in ways they've never seen it before. Visit them, Father God. Visit them today, God. Hallelujah. Visit them, Lord. Hallelujah. For everything is possible to those who believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. 
The angel of the Lord came to Elizabeth and said, People used to say that you yes. were barren. Yes. Today we put an end to your barrenness to. because with God everything is possible. Ah, Nothing is impossible with God. Mm. Nothing is impossible Thank with you, those Lord who Jesus. believe. Nothing is impossible. Thank you, Lord God Jesus. is about to surprise you mm. with a surprise that comes only from heaven. Shekabon. That even people will look and testify ah, on your behalf of the goodness they of God to. in mm. your life. They will testify. Mm on your behalf mm. hallelujah thank you lord. thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah hashata tarabas tete tete babas tete tete babas haya babas tete tete babas oh jesus spirit of truth i pray that you would come and bring light in the hearts of your people mm. Spirit of truth, come and bring your truth, God, your understanding, God. Yes, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We thank you, everlasting King. Hallelujah. 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 We give you praise, Lord. You are the most high. You are Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Hallelujah. Welcome, Apostle. Mm. I don't know if you feel to pray something. You know, there is such a rich presence of the Spirit of God. I don't know what God is about to do, but you're not on this platform by accident. I think light going to shine. I think people's heart will be liberated. I think people will rise up with joy. Because when understanding comes, light mm. comes. And yes. darkness disappears. And freedom begins to be secured. The Bible says, "My, they should know the truth and the truth shall set them free. I feel like tonight is a freedom night. Yes. Uh, yeah. It is the shining of the brightness of God. Yes. Yes. That's what I feel in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I feel so humble suddenly. It's like I just want to lay down in his presence. Surrender. Enjoy his presence. Soaking in his presence like a pickle in the bottle. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the hungry ones there coming out to heed from you, to hear your voice, to hear your word, to hear your utterances, your counsel, to hear your voice, oh God. Sonship. Yes. Fatherhood. Yes. Thank you. Ah. Just enjoy his presence and may the Lord bless you and thank you for having me again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Welcome everyone. Yes, the spirit mm. of truth is here yeah. to bring truth, <laughs> to bring light, to bring revelation. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to welcome you again, Apostle. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Yes. <laughs> this Sunday was Father's Day. As you were ministering yesterday, it was just too powerful. Amen. Um, Thank you. I fell in my heart. I wanted we, we, we tackle the subject. Actually, as you were ministering, I felt like, okay, I need to do a conversation with you on spiritual fatherhood. <laughs> uh, because this is something that is very important. And I know a lot of people have a lot of questions yes. regarding that subject, a lot of confusion, <laughs> a lot of misunderstanding. Yes. Um, so I want to shed some light 
and uh, bring some adjustment, mm -hmm. uh, a divine adjustment mm -hmm. in our lives so that yes. we can live in truth and freedom. And uh, so I've, I've got a lot of questions on my heart for you. <laughs> some were my personal questions, some that is something I've noticed yes. uh, in the church as a pastor. I've noticed with people, you know, uh, members, church members watching online. And uh, so I want to get into it. The Bible says that God is our heavenly father. Yes, it is. It almost feels like there's a system that God has set. It's a system of family, mm -hmm. whether in heaven, yeah. whether in the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, in heaven, he's our heavenly father. Now in the earth, he has given us physical father. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and now we have this notion of spiritual fatherhood. Yes. Uh, once you get born again, I can talk by my experience. I remember, you know, growing up as a Catholic uh, young girl, I didn't know much about the kingdom, the things of the kingdom. But mm -hmm. when I got born again, and uh, I remember from nowhere, I had never heard anything about <laughs> spiritual parents, nothing. But from nowhere, I got born again. I remember exactly what I was. We were at the apartment, mm -hmm. you know, a two-bedroom apartment. Yes. I remember I was in the kitchen. <laughs> and uh, from nowhere, I felt a need in my heart. I, I felt, and from nowhere, I said, I need spiritual parents. Yes. And from nowhere. And I didn't know nothing. So, so I know it's, it's, uh, it's something that is from God. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like I was cheating on something. It's, it's a need that came from my spirit. Yes. I felt like, yes, I just received Christ. But now I need to belong to, to yeah. a family, you know. Having, you know, good natural parents. I felt like, oh, I need spiritual parents too. Mm -hmm. And so I went on that search. It was very interesting because I had never heard it from anyone. Yes. Anyone. Never the read books reveals, about it. Yeah. But the spirit of mm -hmm. God in me had uh, put that yearning, mm -hmm. that desire in me to look for a spiritual par par parenthood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so I, wanna, I wanted to ask you, what, mm -hmm. what is really, like what is, what is really a spiritual father? Because we're talking about fatherhood. Yes. You know, first and foremost, uh, I want to say thank you for having me. Yes. And You're bringing welcome. such a subject. Before I engage in uh, giving a perspective of answer, because there's a lot different way to define spiritual fatherhood. I like to say, you know, <laughs> this subject is so wide and so deep and so multiple faceted. Um, I will do my best mm. to bring as much light that the Holy Spirit infused through me to you. Uh, I don't believe that we can capture the fullness of it just on a, a platform in one time. Uh, I had to mention as well that these subjects have brought a lot of confusion, as our dear host, Pastor Nadia, my wife, was saying. A lot of confusion, a lot of abuse, a mm -hmm. lot of misunderstanding, and you name it, right? Uh, every type of behavior you can imagine. Uh, some people throw the baby with the bath water, and it goes on. So I'm very humbled <laughs> to stand here trying to talk about such a, de such a deep and complicated subject. But yet, in its profoundness, it's very simple, mm. right? So uh, I will say, you know, uh, spiritual fatherhood is not the design of mankind. As she was saying, it is an heavenly affair. Our father that is in heaven. So father would begin in heaven, not in earth. It begin not, be go, not because Adam and Eve had children. God was a father the same way he was all powerful, mm. the same way he was merciful, the same way he was graceful, the same way he was a father, even though there was nobody yet creating the earth. So it's very important to see the origin of fatherhood is not earthly. The origin of fatherhood is heavenly. That's mm. one. So in the perspective now, we have a biological father. And of course, we have what we are talking about, the subject to the spiritual father. A spiritual father for me is ones that life is life and ministry has raised you up out of the mire of immaturity, bringing you in proper growth and order. 
proper growth and order. He is also one that his words or voice will pierce literally the very heart and the marrow of your existence, bringing massive alignment mm -hmm. to your spirit. It is this one also who will rescue you from the doorstep of literally abandonment, bringing you into his heart, giving you an identity, allowed you to discover the purpose of God in you, empower you, train you, equip you, cover you, love you, and give you a name, making you his son. That's a lot of definition I just gave there. But the reality is that's how rich the subject is. So simply is this man who rescues you from that those steps of abandonment, bring you into his home, giving you a name, and giving you uh, uh, an identity, and also establishing an identity, make you discover your purpose, mm -hmm. and just be with you. You can just look at a natural father. We are here for the well-being of our children. We train them, we raise them, we cover them, we protect them, we nourish them. We are there. And so that's for me, a spiritual father is. Mm. is one who that is voice. When you hear his voice, it pierce your very being, your essence. It brings massive alignment. If you are discouraged, suddenly you feel like a superstar, you can achieve anything. Yes, so that's what I will say a spiritual father is mm. in that perspective. Mm. It is that one that is life and ministry just raise you up out of the mire of immaturity, as I said, mm. and bring an alignment and growth and order to your life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul, when he was speaking to the church of Corinth, he was speaking to them, saying, you know, you have many teachers, but only one father. Mm. Um, how do you, I know it's a, it's a very wide question, how do you know that you have found your spiritual father number yes. one number two do you go look for that person or is it just a just a design from heaven yeah. Th this portion of scripture i think is first corinthians chapter 4 15. Mm. It, it is very important that we define it as mm. the original scripture write it mm. it's very important that is in the greek i'm talking about it says that you have many teachers or tutors mm. but few Fathers. Mm. It didn't, the New Living Translation translated back by saying you have only one father. Mm. It says few fathers. Mm. That's what the King James and the original said. In other words, what is interesting about this word few fathers mm. is not just numbers. Mm. It is the number that is few on the length, the length of a lifetime. So it is not today I can have many spiritual fathers. No, that's not what it said. Mm. It said you can have few spiritual fathers in the length of your life, right? Mm. So in this portion of my life, I don't have 20 spiritual fathers. But as I'm growing in fulfilling God's purpose, it can happen that based on the direction God is taking you to. Mm. Watch me, this is very important. Because I think that's where the biggest confusion is. Mm. So we can't say, yes, you can have many spiritual fathers and mm. no, you can have only one. Mm. We need to define this mm. properly mm. in the context mm. of numbers and mm. length of time. Shut, 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 this is very important. Mm -hmm. So somebody can bring me to the Lord. And at that perspective, he's my spiritual father. Mm. But yet as I'm growing mm -hmm. in the likeness of Christ, God can move me in another place and set me up under another person who could become for me a spiritual father in that stage of my life. And that's why sometimes I relate to my sons and daughters. This is my son in the ministry. Because if you read what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4.15, Paul said, you don't have many fathers, you don't have many, you have many tutors, mm -hmm. but you don't have many fathers. Mm -hmm. I have become your father in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. by the gospel. In mm -hmm. other words, I have become your father in the perspective of preaching the gospel by leading you to the Lord. Gosh, 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 gosh. But I can become also your father mm. in Jesus Christ, not through the preaching of the gospel, mm. but through the ministry in equipping you to rise, raise you up, to send you to where you should go. So the one who leads you to the Lord can be your spiritual father and stand there and continue to be your spiritual father until you become what God called you to be. You too begin to tap into your fatherhood mm. because in every son there's a father. Mm. All right? This is very important. So my father will lead me to the Lord. I honor him. I bless him. 
But when he led me to the Lord, I stayed with you only one week. Mm, mm. Uh-huh. So now, God moved me now to the to United States. Mm. Then he put me in the care of another man. Mm. Doesn't mean automatically he's my father. Mm. But he can become, remember what Paul said, mm. I became your father. He became the father. He was not just, you are the father. Mm. He became the father. So somebody can be just a normal person who can become your father. Mm. The same way Joseph became a father to Pharaoh. Mm. Mm. He was not the father to Pharaoh before. He became the father for Pharaoh. Mm. You see? Mm. And so this other one who lead me to Lord, I give him honor. Mm. I give him respect. Mm. If I come in his presence, I will say, Papa, thank you for having led me to the Lord. But yet in your growth, in your growth, in your maturing, God can move you and put you under another person who can become a father. Doesn't mean it's automatically. Mm. But he can become a father to you to take you to where you are from the mire of immaturity. And equip you, empower you, and shoot you somewhere. Because sometimes the father will lead you to the Lord doesn't have what it takes to take you to where you should go. Mm, 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 mm. So we have few fathers, but in the length of time of our lives. This, so, so the translation that says you have only one father is not rightly translated. That's the NLT. is not rightly translated. That portion is not. That's why King James and other versions will say you are many tutors. Some of them say thousands of tutor, uh, tutors and, 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 and teachers, but you have few fathers, few fathers. That few fathers is in the now and in the length of the lifetime of a person, depending on the prophetic journey God takes on him. That's where confusion comes. Okay, that's a lot to get in. <laughs> All right, you're so, going to help me with questions because yeah. that was very profound. Yeah. Now, so like in a context of mm -hmm. a church setting, yes. so let's say I go uh, become a member of a church mm -hmm. because I, I have seen it, especially in our African immigrant churches mm -hmm. where, you know, you come from Africa, you are in a church and, uh, you know, first of all, okay, 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 just be patient. I have a lot of questions mm -hmm. to ask. Does that mean that if I become part of a church, my pastor become my spiritual father? No, okay. not automatically. Colette, we just answered that question. Yes, you can have many spiritual fathers in the length of time. Mm -hmm. Depend of your where you are at in your period of growth and where God is taking mm -hmm. you to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to come back here and say, is a, every pastor is first and foremost a pastor. Mm -hmm. So you are a pastor, a shepherd to everybody who is a part of your community mm. of believers mm -hmm. that we call the household of believers. But you are not automatically a father to everybody. Mm. Mm. This is very important. And I believe in some of our churches, especially in uh, immigrant churches or in even in Africa mm -hmm. or in some places, we assume mm. because... Because this one come to my church, I'm automatically his father. That's where abuses begin mm. and, and, and misunderstanding begin. No. Sonship is established by the spirit. Mm. By the spirit. Yeah. Not just because you show up in the place now. Mm. No, he is your pastor. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. He is your shepherd. He is your teacher. But not automatically he is the father to you. Mm. This is so This good. is very important. Mm. So could it be that, like in our immigrant church, it's more out of a respect and uh, culture, title and culture thing yeah. more than the spiritual part we're yes. talking about? Sometimes it's out of culture because mm -hmm. we are well taught. When you mm -hmm. see an elderly person, I do it all the time. I don't call an elderly by the name. I say Papa. Mm -hmm. I will say Daddy. I will say Ba, Baba, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So in our culture, we show respect and honor in mm -hmm. such a perspective mm -hmm. that sometimes it can mingle. Mm -hmm. And it can be devastating in some cases mm -hmm. because a, a pastor can superimpose a fatherhood on a person who is not right. his son, That's but right. is a sheep in mm -hmm. his church mm -hmm. to lead. Or a sheep can position themselves in the place of fatherhood, uh, in the place of sonship that is not quickened by the Spirit of God, all right? And you can be disappointed sometimes that this person does not relate to you as a son, but rather as a sheep. Mm. So it's very important. Fatherhood and sonship are birth in the spirit, established by the spirit. It's not a choice of the best preacher on the market mm. or just the church where I go automatically. It is that. We become mm. fathers. 
and we become sons. It's a process. Mm, mm, mm. So what I'm hearing is it's for the son to recognize the father first to, 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 to avoid this kind of confusion, even abuse, because we don't want as a shepherd to impose. Yes. You know? Generally speaking, the best wisdom to bring such, anybody who comes to your church can give you honor and respect mm. because you are a father figure. Mm -hmm. It's very important here. You're a father figure. So they can relate to you as daddy, mm -hmm. uh, papa, or father. The Catholic understood that. That's why they call the priest father. We don't realize that. Mm -hmm. The Catholic called the priest father because for them, if you begin to come in the congregation, he is a father figure. Mm -hmm. He is a father figure. So every pastor is a father figure in that perspective. Mm -hmm. So we can relate to him as father, as a son of honor. Mm -hmm. And I'm just talking about the livelihood of working prophetically together in the order of father and son. That's where we need to be careful. Mm, 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 mm. I'll give you an example. In some churches, uh, people will relate to the pastor as father, daddy, daddy, father, and so The people don't relate to him like that sometimes. They feel like outsiders. Mm. The first mandate of a pastor is not to be a father. He can be a father figure. In the same way, he can be a brother figure. In the same way, he can be a friend figure. In the same way, he can be a teacher figure. You understand? But his mandate, first and foremost, is to be a pastor. That is a shepherd. The one who guides the sheep to the still waters. To grow them in the likeness of Christ. That's what the role of a shepherd is. To feed them and to protect them. You see? That's, that's what it is. We should stand in that boundary and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Okay, so this is so profound. So if, let's say, I come, I'm your member, congregation member, and I say, I really feel in my heart, you are my spiritual father. You, as a father, what do you do? When a man and a woman come, and it is so beautiful, if we can get to that place, we can have those conversations. Mm -hmm. So we can actually avoid to hurt one another. Mm -hmm. Because if you think somebody is your spiritual father, and you haven't got a conversation in that manner, mm -hmm. and you don't see them relating to you as a daughter or a son, what's going to happen, you will put an unhealthy demand upon them in the perspective of fatherhood. Mm. And if they do not react accordingly, you can get really hurt. Mm. So I think it's important. If somebody came and said, you know, I know you are my pastor, mm -hmm. but I feel in my heart, I was looking for fatherhood. The same way when you got born again, you fell in your spirit, I need a spiritual father. One who will go beyond just being a pastor, right? Mm. One who can grow me beyond the church boundaries mm -hmm. and beyond the description of the job description of a pastor right the one who can buy into my life and i can buy into his life then he can equip you and empower me and release me and and so on then the father the pastor will pray with them together and said let we put this in the hand of the lord because father when sonship is not a man's strategy putting things together it's spiritual there are some people who have been in our church for the longest who never relate to me as a father figure. Even if I knew in my spirit they were, I will not go and impose mm -hmm. such to them. It's become an abuse. Mm -hmm. So you need to stay back and let God do. And now, when they begin to relate as a father figure to me, it's such a beautiful thing because it took the time it could take, but it did happen in that perspective. So we don't manipulate this. Because many pastors, I'm just keep talking, I'm so sorry, Go but you know, sometimes pastorship, we live in a place where it's like Father would give us such an honor and such a dignity. We want to bring everybody in the sonship perspective. It should not be that way. Let be pastors and let the Holy Ghost set up the um umbilical cord between you and the one he has chosen to bring them into son and father order. Simple as it can be. Some also can relate to you as a father and you relate to them as a son, but you don't, they don't call you daddy father. Mm. That's also something to know about. Mm -hmm. so, but again, the Holy Ghost. So let's say, you know, I say you are my spiritual father. Does that, what is, so I'm giving you an access, which is more than an access of a regular pastor. Yes. What is that access really, you know, you know, what is it exactly, that relationship? Number one, when we go in the perspective of father, we can learn from biological perspective. Mm. When I want to talk to Rafaela, I don't ask her permission. I call her. Mm. 
I said, baby, how are you doing? Mm. I'm doing well. Everything is okay. I'm, I'm checking on her beyond pastoral care. Mm. Because I'm, I'm going beyond that boundary. Because I see in this person, I have a mandate from heaven mm. to grow this person mm. beyond mm. the general teaching that I give everybody on Sunday. Mm. I want to follow on them to make sure they are rising up to become who God wanted to be, not only to fulfill the call of God upon their life, in mm. any area, wherever it can be. Mm. So I give, they give me that permission in that perspective mm. to be able to ask them tough questions. Because in father was their circumcision. Mm. You see? If you are a son and a father come and say, son, no, 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 you should not do that. It's circumcision. If you can handle circumcision, the Bible says he loved those that he disciplined, all right? He disciplined those he loved, sorry. He loved them, he disciplined. He disciplined, he loved them. So in that perspective, circumcision is a good sign to know who's the son. Mm -hmm. Who can handle a rebuke for his own welfare? Mm -hmm. You can't do that job of a congregation member. You will hurt the feeling. Mm -hmm. You will hurt the feelings. Yeah. Wow, that's so profound. So as a Christian then, you can have in your whole life, you can have just a pastor and not even have a spiritual father. Yes, but nevertheless, mm. because God has set up mm. a model, because mm. remember, God works with models. He's a systematic God. Mm -hmm. When you want to do something, he creates a model, always. Mm. He want to create humanity, mm. he created a human being, mm. and he doesn't do it twice. Mm. The model of a transfer of generational blessing in the heart of God mm. was an order that he created that we call the order of father and son. Mm. God created the order of father and son so he can transmit the increase of generational flow, blessing from mm. generation to generation. Mm. So it becomes important for every individual not to be stressed, I gotta have one now, I gotta have one now, but to understand even in prayer, Father, I believe in the order of father and son, where you communicate generational blessing from one to the other. I believe in that. So therefore, quicken my spirit, connect me. Mm -hmm. Who has my other part of the umbilical cord? Who's my source? Because that's what a father is. Mm -hmm. A father is a source for resources. All right? So who is that source of mine? And I believe when you bring that in prayer, God will connect you to that person. And generally speaking, the person will be accessible. The person will not be far away from you. Because the same way in biological perspective, fatherhood and sonship or daughtership, it is through connection, relationship. It's not a system. Mm -hmm. All right? In the same manner, your spiritual father will be also accessible to you so that he can mature you and grow you and guide you and build you up and love you and cover you to bring you out of that Mary clay or uh, Mary uh, mire of uh, immaturity. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have that physical contact. It's important communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is so profound. I didn't know it would go this way. This <laughs> this yeah. conversation. This is so profound. Now, can you? Because it's a spirit to spirit connection, really it is. from the from the Lord. As a Christian, can you really be part of a church? You're being blessed, but you have a minister or somebody, not even who is alive, who's passed away, but you you can see that God has connected their teachings to who you are. That's right. You know, can you call that person your spiritual father, even if there's no access? Yeah. But only through teachings and everything. We, we do understand we can have impartation from the perspective of a book mm. of a person, the mm. audio of a person, and so on. And, and a lot of time people say, he's my spiritual father. But the person is not around because spiritual fatherhood is not only communicated just in knowledge. Mm. It's very important. It is communicated not just on partition by knowledge. It is a presence. Mm. It is a presence. The same way a father is there for his children. It is a presence. There's an inheritance as well that's connected to such. All right? So spiritual fatherhood has to go at one time or another mm. beyond just the nice book of somebody. Mm. Or the good impact that an individual has upon me. Because when you take the order of father and son, there is a transfer of inheritance. There is a transfer of blessing. Mm -hmm. Not just knowledge, mm -hmm. but the blessing that is in the bosom of a father mm -hmm. in the ministry. Mm -hmm. 
So at one time or another, God will connect that person. But I just want to make sure it's not a rush thing. I'm going to die right now if I don't have one. That's the way we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Just take your time. Your pastor can be an amazing teacher and bless you. You can honor and respect him. And at the right time, when the Holy Spirit connects your heart to his oblique cord of fatherhood, it shall be. Amen. God will Amen. make it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen a lot of mistakes as ministers, pastors we do, where... It's almost like we want to impose uh, fatherhood, motherhood on on congregation because maybe we understand so much what it is. Uh, but as minister, we need to be careful that That's you right. do not impose who you are, your on presence on somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's come to a ministerial perspective, just answering to that question, mm -hmm. I am the father mm -hmm. of cross point mm -hmm. churches. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that anybody who is in cross points is my son in that perspective. But it is an institution. Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual establishment that we call a vision mm -hmm. that you father. And anyone who connect to that receive a covering in that perspective. Even though individually they may not be relating to you as mm -hmm. a father mm -hmm. or you may not be relating to a father. I want to clarify that mm -hmm. very quickly. Mm -hmm. But we got to be careful as... Uh, uh, Pastor Nadia, my wife, was saying, sometimes we are so eager mm -hmm. to establish a bond between sons and fathers that we impose ourselves, our fatherhood, we impose our fatherhood to everybody. And that is very dangerous. Again, it has to be burst by the Spirit. Abuse are never far when we go in that perspective. Listen to me. In your church, your greatest title is pastor first because that's what you've been anointed for. It's very important. There's nothing little about it. There's nothing little about it. You are the father of your organization or you cover the church, but the individuals, you cannot superimpose your fatherhood and individuals. Mm -hmm. Where in some cases, it's like almost you got, you don't call the person anymore pastor. You need to call him papa, mm -hmm. right? It become a greater title than the the very title you were anointed for. Mm. It's there's something very wrong, and the people don't call you like that. Mm. They are like outcast. They are like rebellious. It's wrong. We can't do that mm. because people come from different backgrounds and different cultures and so on. We need to let the spirit of God do the job the way He does it well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, do you have a spiritual father, and how did you? get to know that he was your spiritual yes. father. I have a spiritual father, Dr. Leon Van Royen, that I love. In fact, two days ago, we are texting, we are communicating. He has taken, <laughs> last year, I think a sabbatical, but uh, he's been a tremendous blessing to my life, and I will give how it happened. When we started the ministry, I begin to pray. I say, Lord, I want you to give me a spiritual father, a man who will be able to speak to me and build me up, somebody that I will call my dad, in the in the in the ministry that i will fulfill the order of father and son because i knew i was a father and standing in fatherhood without being a son there is something that does not connect the good son is a good father and so i prayed and uh in my dream uh it was in the dream god communicated that to me it doesn't have to be your case all right and so in my dream i saw this man Dr. Leon Van Royen, that ha we had met about six years before in a conference. And then he called me out of the crowd and gave me a, a toilet brush. And he said, with the toilet brush in one hand and the Bible in the other hand, you will change the world. And then that was it. I had never seen him again. So one day, as we started the ministry, somebody come give me a ride. I'm sitting with him. It was Keith Morris. And then suddenly I hear the same voice of this man on the phone. But before I hear, I had a dream. And God told me in the dream, this one will lead you and he will be a father to you. And so when I woke up, I said, oh, am I going to go to get a hold of him? I didn't know how to get a hold of him. So months pass and so on. And suddenly I walk in the car of this man who was giving me a ride. And who was preaching on the tape was this man. I said, this voice is similar. South African voice. Wow. I pull out the tape. In those days we have tape. And then I saw the name. I said, yeah, that's him. 
That's the one that will call me in the crowd that used to come to the church where you, we attended. And this is the man now that I have dreamed about. So now I look to look for the phone number so that I can call. But there was no phone number on the tape. And I said to Keith Morris, how do I get a hold of this man? And he said, you know, he preached in the church where I used to go in Trail BC. All right. And therefore, we can call the pastor. So I connected with Pastor Stephen. He was from South Africa. Some of you speaking know him. And he gave me the phone number and I called. Now watch. When I called and he picked up the phone, number one, I was thinking I'll go through 25 different secretaries. <laughs> and so when he picked up the phone, what happened? I said, hello. And I was about to introduce myself. And then he said, hey, how is the toilet brush and the Bible? Just straight to me like that, bang. I said, oh my God, how did this man understood that I'm the guy he has given the toilet brush and the Bible? That was our connection. I think a few times later, my wife and I, we went to Florida to meet him and then the rest was story in that perspective. So that's the way I connected, spiritually speaking, by the Spirit of God with my spiritual father. So can you, can you tell us how is you... Because we, we need to find a healthy relationship. Yes. Would you consider your relationship with your spiritual father healthy? Very healthy. And I will explain. It gave me space as mm. a mature son. Mm. This is very important. He is available. I can call him any moment, any time. He pick up the phone. He return my phone call. He will always ask for my family. How is Amadou doing? How is Aisha? How is Rafaela? How is Nadia doing? Pastor Nadia doing? All the church is doing. Always in the caring way, starting from the family background. Not just the spiritual part only. And for me, that was very, very important. When I need him, I call him. And the other thing I like, it doesn't come and superimpose his stuff on me. Mm. It gave me space, knowing I have become a father. And that's what the beauty of the relationship. And so a couple of years ago, as we started the church in the East, I left the West a little bit alone because every year he was coming to Calgary. As we started the ministry in the East, I decided, okay, let's go to the East because new churches, we can have an impartation, generational blessing impartation and ministry powerfully. So three days ago, we were just talking about the different changes that are happening in the church and so on. And after the coronavirus, we are looking forward to get back together and stuff like that. But always beautiful relationship. Give me freedom, watch over me, pray for me, listen and give me sound counsel and advice. When he speak to me, it realign my being. And that's what I love the most in my relationship with spiritual father, Dr. Leon Van Royen. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's so good. Where are the, 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 the abuse that you've seen or you've heard of, of uh, in those kind of relationships between a father and a son? No, number one, uh, I don't know how to begin this, but I will say it as simple and clear. On both ways, but I will start first by the father because the first rule of leadership, everything is your fault, right? I will start by fatherhood first. A father, it does not mean your children belong to you. It's very important. A father, so I've seen some abuse in the perspective where a son cannot go buy a house without telling his, his papa. He cannot go uh, uh, marry somebody without... I mean, it is crazy. Even in deciding who you're going to marry. The father can give an opinion. But he should not draw a line by saying, no, you should not marry that person. Uh, that's the way it should not be. Even God give us room to make decisions. We can give opinions and give advice and counsel, true. But at the end of the day, we should not go marry only the one that my spiritual father only agree with because he's not the one marrying the person. We need to give space to our sons to make them make mistakes. Seriously. We need to give them space because we are not their God. They still have access to Jesus Christ. The veil is broken. The blood has opened a way for them. And sometimes a spiritual father can become a mediator between their sons and God. And that is anti-biblical. Biblical. There's only one mediator, Timothy said. Between men and God is the man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. Not a spiritual father. Not a pastor. Not a man. Regardless of how much you're connected. 
People still need, the father still need to give room to his son to, to, to be able to walk in this adventure with Jesus Christ. And take decisions. They can ask you for advice. Then that's what I love with my relationship with my spiritual father, Dr. Leon. He, he will give me room to give my opinion. And he will give me advices. And at the end of the day, I'm the one who's going to still take those decisions as a mature son. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it's my life. And I have access to God. I do take his counsel very, very important to my heart. Mm. But nevertheless, it's your life. Mm. It's your life. And sometimes in our discussion, I'll say, you know what, Doc? I feel like I should do this, 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 this. He said, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, go and do. And he would feel like, wow, that's a good thought. Wow, that's amazing. I like that support from him that he can see. He give me room to be able to exercise my relationship with God as a Christian, as a son, and as a father. So we need to be careful. We don't end up controlling, let me use the word, controlling people's life. Mm. They can buy a car without permission. Mm. Huh? They want to start a business, you have to name the business. You, and you are not a business person. Unless God reveals to you, I understand you can advise them, you should call the business that way. But it's not an ownership and entitlement over the life. And the calling of people. This is dangerous. Right. Even God doesn't do that with us. He gives us freedom. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Set us free. Set us free. That's why many people are getting really mad of this fatherhood thing, throwing everything out. Because they feel like their freedom is being robbed. Now I have to say something that's very profound. And I hope we can come back and build this thing. Mm -hmm. the, the greatest problem here, mm -hmm. it is the orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. The orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. You know where the orphan spirit comes from? It's come from Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Lucifer was the first orphan. An orphan is the one who has no home. I didn't say house. I say home. Lucifer was kicking out of his house. That was the heavenly dwelling. He became an orphan. After it was Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Get kicked out of the garden of Eden. The spirit of abandonment and orphans followed them. Today in the church. We have so many orphans. I'm not talking about biological. Mm. Somebody's going, oh, what is the spirit of orphan? Let me tell you. The spirit of orphans come looking for a father who will take care of them. Mm -hmm. Build up their life. Build up their ministry. That's the orphans. But the sons come to lift up the father. But the orphan come for the father to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the abuse become dangerous because that spirit of orphan don't feel, don't, don't look only for a spiritual father. Mm. He, you know, he feels like the spiritual father is also his biological father. Mm. Now, you understand, mm. uh, I couldn't pay my rent. Why you didn't pay the rent for me? We mm. cannot mix this stuff, brothers and sisters. Mm. 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 So fathers need to realize that it's very unhealthy relationship. But the father are responsible because we are the one who are the leaders. We should have a sound understanding to make it clear to people. Listen, I'm not your biological father. I can give you an emotional support in some area, but don't extend the envelope to a place where I have to fill your in and out. I can do that. That's right. That's right. So uh, uh, fathers who lack that understanding and live in uh, insecurity, who we'll think the establishment will come by feeling I'm a father? Listen to me. It's God who called Abraham, Abraham, the father of many. God made him a father. You don't need 25 sons to bow down to your feet for you to be a father. You see, we can mix up this stuff. Please hear me. If you are a pastor and you are listening to me right now, be careful that you don't destroy people's life. By embarking them into a dimension of fatherhood that only the Holy Spirit can establish. Mm -hmm. by, by bringing them in a place where at the end of the day, they get hurt and you cannot deliver. The orphan spirit needs to be dealt with first and foremost. Because of the orphan spirit, it isn't hard for those people to understand what fatherhood is toward God. It's not a man who can replace that. Mm -hmm. So those are some cases of abuse where you can buy a house. Uh, I'm, I need to ask my papa if I should go buy a house. 
Listen, he can have discernment, but he doesn't have discernment for everything. And he's not in real estate for God's sake. And he's ignorant when it comes to management. He has no clue of that stuff. Listen to me. Go ask your expert. And then your father for sure spiritually can give you insight. I'm not saying that because he's not in the domain that he cannot counsel you. But you cannot just put everything on his head that is now. He needs to decide who you marry. He needs to decide which city you live. He needs to decide who's going to be your friend. He needs to decide who you're going to be, uh, which church you need go to go. He needs to decide who can pray for you. He needs to decide where you can live. He needs to decide how you should pray. He needs to decide when you should fast. He needs to decide. My God, even God doesn't decide that for somebody mm, 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 mm. that's where the abuse come mm -hmm. he has become not your spiritual father he has become your god i don't want to take god place i want to empower my children to discover themselves and grow so i can be there to give direction and say ah what do you think about that always i suggest and i let them decide i never impose never a spiritual father should not be a control freak who just impose his will on his children. It's like a biological father imposing his will on his children. We need to watch out, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we get in that place where the people, so-called sons and daughters, do competition to see who's going to win the heart of our father. Who's going to be closer to him. Nonsense! Nonsense! It's puking! Mm. I, I'm, I'm feeling very angry in the spirit mm. because many people's destinies have been damaged dangerously. They've been robbed away from their relationship with God. There is one blood that was shed. That's an abuse. The second abuse is when a spiritual, I'm talking about fathers yet, we haven't talked about sons, is when a father get in a place where he feel like it is his son that need to bleed for his likeness, for his own. No, it's not the blood of a, of a, of a person. It's not the blood of a sheep that saved the world. It's the blood of a shepherd. Jesus died as a shepherd. It was not the blood of the sheep that saved the world. In other words, at one time, the father need to have a sacrificial heart that is expressing love. I'm not waiting for Rafaela to pay my mortgage. I'm using that biologically speaking. But there come a time where a son can take care of his father. But the nonsense that we are seeing around is wrong. It's totally wrong and it's thinking in God's nostril. Too much confusion and too much abuse going on. No, we got to stop it. There are people sometimes who write for me from far. Out of respect, of course, they will say, Oh, daddy. Uh, you're my dad, you know, you're my dad, da, 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 da. and I will tell them, you know, uh, I may have preached in this conference and you got born again. Yes, I am your spirit. I am your dad, your spiritual father in the perspective of your salvation as I preach the gospel like Paul said. But where you are right now, I don't know you. I don't know your name. I don't know where you live. I don't understand what is the call of God upon your life. I don't know what God has for you. You understand what I'm saying? How can I father you like that in fully ignorance, even if we are prophetic? That's not the way God wants we function. In that perspective, God will give you a spiritual father who will live in the confine of where you are. Who will raise you up to your next level. Me, I've done my job. So thank you for the honor you gave me. But now you still need one who will be your spiritual father for your next stage. Me, I've done my part, preach the gospel. I'm your spiritual father in birthing you in the kingdom. But then I don't know you. How am I going to equip you? You may listen to my preaching, but that's not enough. We talk about sonship and fatherhood. We talk about an order that is heaven that they established for the increase of generation blessing. I won't give you my inheritance. I don't know you. You don't carry in. Uh, you understand? It's very important. We have no connection. We don't talk on the phone. You, you know what I'm trying to say? I don't want these people to be hanging out in limbo. And sometimes giving a hard time to the pastor in the church they go. My spiritual father is uh, Apostle Helhaj. Yeah, I led you to learn that way. But now you need to find your spiritual father where you are at that place to take you to the next level. Somebody who can take you out of the mire immaturity that will equip you, that his voice will, will pierce you and raise you up and release you. It's just a bunch of ignorance. And I want to speak into that. I'm a spiritual father to many people. 
and I take pride into it, humbly speaking, but I'm very careful that I give room to my children. In fact, everyone who's released to be a pastor, I'm so sorry I'm talking about an example now. Everyone who's released to be a pastor, go plant a church. I never tell them, you go. I sit down with them, I say, I'm feeling this. Go pray and let me know. I got to give them room. All the cross point churches are not named by me. They have the cross point, but every other name, I tell them, go seek God. Because they have become fathers. We can castrate them so they can remain sons all the days of their life without being able to reprocreate them too. That's another abuse that I see. Where literally people will be at the mercy of this spiritual father forever. Some of them can remain there, but some of them are called to, to have also different ministries. We need to empower them when the right time comes and release them. If they, we can castrate them and take away the fatherhood, because in every Sunday is a father. I will just close my mouth now and let you take over. <laughs> I'm just passionate. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so profound what you're saying now. Um, I've seen a lot of misunderstanding uh, that for a spiritual father and a physical father. I've seen it, a lot of abuse where like a son doesn't know the place of a physical father and a spiritual father. Can you just touch on it a little bit? Because I think number it's very one, important. Number one, hear me. <sighs> Even if your biological parents are not saved, he is your father. And no spiritual father can replace a biological father. There's no competition because they function in two different dimensions. So be careful. Because many biological fathers feel very hurt. Mm -hmm. Crushed. When they talk to their children, and they feel like, no, I need to talk to my spiritual father first. Ah! It cut the man in peace. The, and the father now said, born or not born again. Did he give you birth? Did he clean your diapers? Did he pay for your school? Did he feed you? Do you look like him? We're going to be wise. Because God gives wisdom to fathers even when they are not born again. Now, understand spiritual father or spiritual father. If they tell you to do something that goes against the scripture, no, you won't do it. But I'm just saying, listen to me. There is a place of your physical father in your life that no spiritual father can play that role. Mm. That's why when I want to marry people, regardless how much I think God told me, and I agree with them, I always ask them, is your father is a part of this deal? And if they say, no, my dad does not want, I will not rush to go do it. I will take my time and investigate. Because he is the highest authority in your life in the earth. Okay, I will say it again. <laughs> he is the highest authority in your life. Somebody say, why do we say that? Because I just told you, you can have few spiritual fathers. Did you hear what I said? You can have few. In other words, you can have few in the course of your life. But your biological father, when they cut your blood, even if you don't like him, your size of your nose will not change. You look like that. You can go with another spiritual father and grow in grace and grow in maturity and faith to learn new way of praying that you never learned before and receive new impartation. But at the end of the day, there is nobody... Even if your grandmother raised you up, when they cut your blood, it's not your grandmother's blood that flow there. So your physical, biological father, please, when he speak a word on you, ah! even though he's not born again, heaven respond. Why? Because fatherhood is heavenly. Save or not save. Spiritual father has his place in a spiritual perspective. Your biological father has his place in your life perspective. Life. That's why when you're going to marry, those are the ones who give you away. It's not your pastor. It's not your spiritual father. They are the one, before God, they stand as the parent. Yes. That's why the Bible says, honor your parent. 
honor your father. When he say father, particularly there, he's speaking about biological. Even though we can extend it to the spiritual mandate. So for me, I always tell people, I am your spiritual father, but you have a natural father. How's dad doing? I will honor that father because he gave me you. That's why everyone who is in our church, your parents have visited. I will stand on the pulpit and I will say, Papa, thank you for giving us this one to be our daughter. Mm. Always I do it. Some of you listening to me, you can testify. And I appreciate them. I don't, I don't ask where the level of spirituality is or if they are Catholic or whatever. It's the parent. So for, that's the, that the answer. Is that the answer is okay? <laughs> is that the answer is okay, baby? Yes. So now. <laughs> you get me going with this thing and we'll, I won't stop. But, you know, yeah. take over. The, Sometimes the, cut me off. I'm okay with it. <laughs> no, no, no. You, it's, it's very powerful. There's something I've noticed in your ministry. You mm. specifically. You are a spiritual father to many people. But I've noticed a lot of sons and daughters come from broken families. Mm -hmm. And because God has graced you, not only to be a physical, uh, spiritual father to them, but in your nature, you, you, you father anyone. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because maybe your background, you have so much compassion on people. Yes. I've seen you going beyond <laughs> your spiritual fatherhood, actually doing the job of a physical father yes, to true. those people. And um, it becomes very hard, you know, for that woman or that daughter to just to, to differentiate. Yes. Because you have, you have taken those both place just because of that's who you are True. you see a need you want to meet it yes but you you understand your place as a spiritual father yes and uh, and even pastors sometimes they do the job of physical father because the fathers are not gotta, around yes mm -hmm. so, so they have to wear that hat yes whether they like it or not that's right because needs need to be met mm -hmm. so so becomes hard for the the children the physical children or spiritual children to differentiate sometime, you yes. know, and you become both to them. Yes, that is very important mm -hmm. what she mentioned. Now, sometime is not all the time. Again, as I said, this is the Holy Spirit that leads. Out of the mandate that is being cultivated for a father or a pastor, we stay in those mandates. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there is an individual who will come with such a brokenness mm -hmm. because they don't have physical parents. And God will endure you. And it happened to me often because of my heart. God will endure you to lend the hands of compassion and love to support this person sometime out of that brokenness and fragmentation. Right? Once they get out of that, they cannot connect. Okay, thank you. <laughs> they cannot understand, but there have to be a communication mm -hmm. between you and them. Mm -hmm. And it's true. I have lived my life in that perspective, not to everybody, but to some specific individual that the level of scattering and brokenness was in such a way. If there was no hands of a father would figure, I will put figure on it, to recuperate them, it then the impartation of the spirit will not have room to be able to manifest. So much the scattering was dangerous. But nevertheless, I do not recommend that in that way. You still need, at the end of the day, to bring the boundaries where they should be fit. And I miss that so many times. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I've had a conversation with some of our spiritual daughters. And I've seen that the line has been crossed. Yes. You know, because of where people come from. And uh, then the expectation becomes so unhealthy. True. You know. So I, I just felt like I needed to express that. So and that is understand. important. Yeah. Mm. Even for the daughters and the son in that perspective, I think that we need to have a clear, concise conversation, especially when those boundaries are crossed. Mm -hmm. We need to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, wow. It's already 8 o'clock. I'm going to ask you if you have any questions. We're going to answer <laughs> some questions. And then I would like we pray for against that Often spirit, yes, you know, mm. because I think it's very important. Mm. As they are going, the question I would mm. like to mention this, and that can help a pastor. Mm. I, I just feel it's important. Mm. 
In the course of the years, I have made many mistakes mm. where you took some people to be like a sun perspective and in the end up they were not. Mm -hmm. Right? So watch this. God has given me a wisdom by which I ask him to give me a discernment to know who is who in my church. Mm. Who is who? Number one, everybody's a sheep. Mm. That is the common denominator. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's that clear. Now, even among those who are a son and daughter, you still need to know what type of son or what type of daughter they are. Mm -hmm. You see, when you look at the model of the family of Abraham, you have three categories of sons that apply also to daughter, but I will just say sons. Three categories. The first category, it is the son of the type of Ishmael. Ishmael is not a bad dude, please. Yet he's a son. He's a son. A son is not just the guy who is the most obedient and does whatever you want. That's not what it is. There are different categories of sonship. So Ishmael is actually a son of to Abraham. But at the end of the day, that type of sonship come in your ministry. Usually the Ishmael are like donkeys. They are powerful. They can produce. They can make the ministry rise up with strength. But those ones never remain in the house. They have their own and they will go without bearing your name. So a pastor needs to be able to have discernment to understand who is Ishmael among my sons. So when the time comes, Ishmael is feeling the fire coming of fatherhood that he want to get out. You open the door, you release them, you celebrate them. If not, they will put a, a hole in the wall. And that's why church division come. Number two, the Isaac type. We call those ones the beloved. Is the one who will inherit from you. They will not leave. If you move to Russia, they follow you. In other words, they stand with you. They are a part of the ministry. They go nowhere. They, they are better ministries around, but for them, me, I'm at cross point. This is where I am. This is where I belong. If it doesn't matter, you go up and down. I am an Isaac. I'm a beloved son. I feel the heartbeat of my father. When he's bleeding, I feel it. When he's crying, I feel it. Where am I going to go? This is where God put me. That's another type. And usually the Isaacs, sometimes they don't show much strength like the Ishmael. <laughs> because Ishmael's gift is visible. Mm. It's powerful. It's demonstrative. They are eloquent. They can move in the spirit. But yet the Isaac, they are the coy one, quiet one, just there, normally just doing the whatever needs to be done. And this is the third category. Is the children's, the third category of the children of, uh, of Abraham. Mm. That's what we call the apostolic sons and daughters. Mm. Because when Sarah died, Abraham remarried. And Abraham had children with Keturah. Those sons bear your name and will expand your ministry abroad. Mm. It doesn't matter if it's business, it's whatever it is. Mm. So it's important. By the spirit and revelation, by prayer, that you can look into all your sons and daughters and know where each one is at. And no one is bad. Mm. There are just different classes, including Ishmael. His role in your life and in your ministry is vital and important. And he's not a bad dude. Mm. He just have his own ministry and he doesn't have to bear the name of yours. Mm. Mm. But the Keturah sons, they go out and they bear your name. And they expand the ministry for the family. Mm, mm. I just wanted to mention that. That's so profound. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now I'm going to speak as a pastor. Mm. Some of the challenges we come up with, especially when we have people who come in our church and they come from back home. They have their pastor who is their spiritual father. And they come, they ask for counseling. And then you give them counseling and then they like, Okay, I need to talk to my spiritual father or to <laughs> go talk to the spiritual. My spiritual father said, wait. You know, it's very, it's very challenging for, yeah. for ministers yes. sometimes. Yes. Because your authority is always challenged. Mm. Uh, one of the things I would recommend is this. It is so funny that came to my mind. When I was coming to Canada, of course, my dad was married to another woman here because my parents never got really married. And uh, I remember my mother said something to me. Mm. And, and I want you to capture this because I believe sometimes God can use a physical reality to draw spiritual principles and mm. truth. And my mother said to me, 
you are leaving this place and you are going to this other country. The woman you will find in the house mm. that is the wife of your father, from today, she has become your mother. So, for me, it's important. Even though you leave Nigeria, you leave uh, Kenya, you leave Ghana, you leave Ivory Coast, Congo, whatever. Your spiritual father is your spiritual father. I don't debate that. But you have to make him understand, or at least the spiritual father should know that. Mm -hmm. To be able to tell him, son, wherever you go there, serve in that house. Whoever will be the leader of that ministry that you belong to, submit and serve like your own house. That person has become God agent to counsel you, to support you, to build you. Listen to me. If you want to prosper in my house, you cannot be taking advice from outside and come and challenge my own advice mm. in my own house. How am I going to raise you up now? Mm. Him, him is in Kenya. How is he going to raise you up in my church? A minister in the government of Kagame in Rwanda is not a minister in the government of Alberta, of, of Canada. We still need to be able to have counsel there. But we have to understand there is another authority over our life regarding things pertaining to our life and godliness. If not, it is a mess because your pastor will be incapable to help you. Your, kappa, your pastor will not be able to bless you. Your pastor will not be able to guide you because every time he will tell you something, you will go check up there and check up there. So his spiritual authority is challenged indirectly. Mm -hmm. And that's not right. In fact, if that's the way it is, you should just stay home and follow your spiritual father online and stay there. It is better because if not, it creates too much nonsense. Mm. God still gave an authority to your local pastor to guide you and to lead you. God will give him wisdom pertaining to you in the place where you are. It's very important. Trust God in that perspective. And any wise father will say, yes, it is true what I'm saying. Son, please submit to this man. The next level of your blessing might be in him. And if you go tell something to your father, if you tell me, I will ask you, so what your pastor said? I will ask that. And if I see there is a major contradiction that can cost your life. I myself will call the pastor. So we can function at father level. Mm. I will call the pastor and say, Pastor, as you know, this gentleman, Jonathan, is my son. He was with me here for many years. And I'm so glad. Uh, he told me how blessed he is to be a part of the church. Uh, regarding to his marriage decision, he has shared this with me. I think this we got to talk about it at a father level. So we can make sure our boy, I will say our boy. I can, we can make sure our son can function properly. So then wisdom can be crossed and wisdom can be shared at a higher level of authority for the wellness of the son. That's the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not, it becomes a very dangerous thing because the son will begin to manipulate. Every time the pastor will tell him something, he will say, no, my father said not to do it. You know what? If you do that in my church all the time and I cannot pastor you, I will ask you to just go to another church. Because at the end of the day, how can I execute my pastorship if then I have no authority to lead you? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> this is so profound. Now, one more question, hopefully. Now we're going apostolic. Yeah. Let's say you have somebody who wants to be under your organization close mm -hmm. one. Yes. Do they automatically have to be your spiritual son? Or is there a difference between being under an organization uh, apostolically but not being a spiritual father to that person who's under you? Yes. It is depend of the organization. We can look abroad. Mm -hmm. We can see many organizations. They've they, they call that a network. Mm. They use the term network in the perspective. We are coming together. We can benefit of certain things there and there. Uh, give you credential. Uh, give you some book to read. Connect a yearly uh, uh, conference and so on. There is no fatherhood expression. It's a system that is running. It's a network. And it's very important to have such network if that's where you are at. For us at Crosspoint, in the course of the years, many people, many, 
have written to me, called me, wanted to join our organization as a cross point church. That's not my mandate. I felt in those days, I said no, because I didn't want to build, I say me, all right? I'm not talking about other organization. I didn't want to build a franchise. I wanted to build an order of father and son because that was my personal mandate. And that's why we could have planted many more churches, hundreds and hundreds, because every year and every moment we have those opportunities. Mm. But I never took them in any form because the order of father and son is something I believed in him so deeply because my heart is a father. It is to translate a generational blessing to my children. Mm. And because of that, I didn't do that, of course. Mm. But nevertheless, I have churches that are connected with me, but not cross point per se. Even in one case, I'm a father figure to that gentleman and their family, spiritually speaking, but they are not a part of cross point. In fact, the Holy Spirit made it very clear. It's not a matter of merging like a franchise. Mm. So it is my first case where I have taken one person under my wing, heart to heart in true father, son, demonstration, expression, according to that order God set. But yet the person is not associated directly with the organization of cross point. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Makes so sense. in some cases we can do that. And in other cases, I have not brought anybody in as a church to a cross point that is not my son. Mm -hmm. If a person will come in as a cross point, I have, at least at this time, mm -hmm. thing could change, I don't know, mm -hmm. because it's not sinful to do either way. But my mandate, it is father and son. Remember, baby, we're sitting at the restaurant years ago. We're not pastors. And the Holy Spirit spoke to us. And he said this, I will raise you up to be a father to the fatherless. Mm -hmm. Those who are hanging around the wilderness, they will come to you. And we have some cases like that. People who have come to our church who were broken, all right? Because hurt by other fathers, they could not recuperate. Cross point has become, in those cases, a place of healing and restoration. And some of them today have been empowered and released to begin the churches. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I like that better. Mm -hmm. This father and son order mm -hmm. that is based on love, respect, and honor. And so it depends on the vision of the, the, the apostolic Exactly. Mm -hmm. It depends on the apostolic vision God gave to each person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to put questions in. If uh, Claudia, you can pin them, or Priscilla, whoever was uh, uh, do password, so we can answer a few questions. I feel like we need to keep going on this subject of spiritual fatherhood because I think it's very, very important. Um so if you have any question, you can just shoot it and we'll go on. I, I, I was thinking when you were talking about, uh, I wish my daughter was here. Maybe she could be the one to better answer that yes, question. Yes, of course. Uh, how, as a child of, a, of a, a, a man like you, a spiritual father, where other sons in the Lord come call you daddy, daddy. Yes. What is the place of your physical, you know, child? Or even if your physical child, can they still be a spiritual child to you or they can find somebody else? Yes. Number one, uh, just to answer to that question, in the course of the years, I know the mandate, the apostolic mandate is a fatherly mandate, first and foremost, mm. before going any further. The same way sometimes it's not easy for any family to engage in the call of God. Mm. And I remember one day I was having a drive with Rafaela, my biological daughter and my spiritual daughter. And uh, she spoke to me something very profound. She had looked around and see in the church how a lot of people that we have related to as sons and daughters dropped me on the side of the road, crushed my back, destroyed and left. And then she, 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 she had, she's so wise. And I learned this one from her. And that's where my turnaround came in. She said to me, you know, daddy, the spiritual children, one day they can leave you, but the biological going nowhere. Mm. This is so profound and so powerful. So yes, true. It's not easy for a biological child when people actually accaparate. It's not even calling daddy mm. or calling mommy, mommy, mommy. It is to accaparate. Mm. In other words, it is to take over you not having any sense that you have biological children. Mm. And I've then seen some cases where they get in competition 
with the biological children. <laughs> And it's the responsibility not of the biological children. It's the responsibility of the father to bring alignment, clarification, and draw the line. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. That's amazing. We're going to get into questions. If you, Claudia, can pin them or Priscilla. Praise the Lord. This is what's so profound. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Okay, question. This is from Ritza. How would you interpret the verse that says to only call God our Father? I paraphrased. This verse brings confusion, and especially when it comes to spiritual fatherhood. Uh, can you post the verse so that we can have more clarity? Because context is extremely important. important. Yes, yeah. yes. Please, Ritza, just put Thank on you. the verse. And uh, while you're doing that, we'll go to the next question. Um, question, that's from Enoch. Uh, I could answer Rita's that question, but I think it's important she does. When the Bible says, you know, uh, we should only call God our Father, the perspective was people who are born again. You know, God is only our Father. We are not born from another spirit, but the Spirit of God. Mm. So our birthing in the perspective of a new creation is not a man who is our father. Mm. It's not a spiritual father. It is God who is our father. Because we are born of the spirit of God, becoming a new kind of individuals. Mm. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Question that's from Enak. Do your spiritual father and your spiritual mother have to be a couple? <laughs> that is a very good question. If it is, it will be beautiful. All right. But it doesn't have to be because the Holy Spirit has way to work that are just amazing, right? And diverse. But generally speaking, if it is, it is the best in that perspective. Mm. But doesn't have to be. And mostly it is. Mm. And if it's not, it's not the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't see any other question. Okay. I think that's all the questions, so that's beautiful. Praise the Lord. Can you, okay, that's from Rafi. Can you have a spiritual dad and not have a spiritual mother? Yes, you can have a spiritual father and not have a spiritual mother, but then depend, watch me now, Depend of the perspective of what God has for you mm. for a season, a given season, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I will use an example. It's like children. Uh, at a certain age, depending on if they are boy or girl, at a certain age, they will need more their mother, less than their, mother, than their father. And then at another age, they will need more their father, more mm -hmm. than their mother. Mm -hmm. So in the course of growth, as we are manifesting the call of God, getting ready, being built up, being equipped, sometimes... A spiritual father will imprint, will imprint you strength and build you up in a place where a mother would not do. And down on the road, a mother can come in that perspective. Or sometime together. Even if they are there, they will operate in your life depending on the season that you are going through. Right? Amen. But again, it's not to go, I gotta have one now. I gotta have one. Please don't do that. That's where we make mistakes. Mm -mm. Amen. There's one important question. That's from Emeline. I've heard that we should give the tithe and offering to our spiritual father. But since we can have few fathers, my understanding is that we should give to our local church. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know where it is said we should give our tithe to our spiritual father. Uh, the Bible says in Malachi, bring your tithe to the storehouse, not to an individual. Even though the priest was a, um, uh, was, um, a figure, a father figure, uh, benefited, of course, of the offering that was brought into the temple in that perspective, that was the tithe, all right? Uh, but it does not say to bring the tithe and give it to an individual, even though it will benefit a spiritual father or a pastor and so on. Amen. So, so the people said you should go and give your tithe to your spiritual father. That's, that's nonsense. You can give an offering to your spiritual father or to a prophet or to a but, but the tithe, it has to come to the house that there may be food in my house. 
talking about the priest that can benefit the spiritual father, but it is to the house it comes because we give a tithe to Christ. Amen. This is from Manir. As a spiritual father, how do you treat Ishmael versus Isaac? <laughs> You're smarty. <laughs> That's a good question. You love them both the same. The reason they carry different strength and manifest it differently is because of the calling that is embedded in each one. They mm. don't have the same prophetic destiny. So you have to love Ishmael as you love, the same way you love your children. And that's why it was so hard for Abraham to let Ishmael go. Because it was his first son. It was his playboy. It was the one he played in the dust with. He's the one who make him feel like, again, I'm a man. Remember, he was barren. So usually when the Ishmael come in the ministry, generally speaking, not all the time, it is in the youth of the ministry. It's just when it just starts. Mm -hmm. Then you have people who have big muscles in the spirit who can shift things around and get things done. It doesn't mean they're automatically Ishmael, please don't, don't. But you love every son with all your heart. The same way God love everyone with his heart. Doesn't matter if you're a, a goat or a sheep, we should love the sheep and the goat in likely manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay, so that's from Yvette. Can you talk about tithing in this time? It's important, although it's not about spiritual fatherhood, but it's important this question is clarified. Can you talk about tithing in this time of online church where we follow different churches, not just local ones? Thank yeah. you. Uh, very good question. Thank you for sharing that. Um, if you're online and you follow different churches, there's a church you belong to. Mm. And so when we talk about the storehouse, it's speaking about the local church you belong to. Even though we follow online different preachers, there is one church where we are a member of that church. Mm. Even though we can be blessed by another ministry, there is a church where we belong. Cross Point, for example, had a membership. And even in this time, there are people who are not belonging to any church who may have decided to be a part of a church, even though they have not gone there physically yet. God, the same way you honor the preaching that is given to you, the same way you honor the benediction because of the situation in which we go, you can begin to give your tithe in that church because you know in your heart, this is now my church. That is very important. But nevertheless, it's not because you watch a lot of people, but you have a local church that is your church and that's where your tithe should go. I will say it again. Your tithe should only go to the local church you belong to. There, that's it. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. be a blessing to the ministry that's yes. blessing you. Yeah, that's an offering. Yes. You can send an offering, but the tithe belongs to the storehouse of the local church where you belong. And if you don't belong to a local church, probably it will be great important to connect yourself to a church as your local church from now on forth. Because mm. there is a blessing there as well that can be bestowed upon you. Just the fact that you belong to a local church, you belong to a grace. Amen. Yeah, Amen. So that's a good prayer point for mm -hmm. God to, mm -hmm. to lead you in that. Amen. This is from uh, Yedidia. How would you help the spiritual children in competition with the biological ones? Because some spiritual children can be offended by not being treated the same yes. way as the physical You know, one. this question is so important. I say, mm -hmm. Rafaela really helped me. We were having a date drive in Ottawa, and she bring this thing and really hit me so hard. I usually have some wisdom to give, but that day I surrender. <laughs> Here's my point. You, the father, because we cannot relinquish that to the spiritual children and the biological children. It's you, as the father figure, who need to draw the line. You need to rise up and say, hey, right now, there's a crossing of lines. I have my daughter, biological, Rafaela, in this case. I'm just using this case for an example's sake. I have you as a spiritual daughter as well. You have to honor and respect the biological daughters. Okay, I will say it again. Every spiritual child, to a father has to honor the biological child because they are sharing in some ways their own father with other people. And if any time you feel there's a competition trying to accaparate you, you should draw the line and say, mm -mm, you can't go that way. It's not because I kiss my daughter, I need to kiss you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So it is the responsibility of the father to actually draw that line. And if the biological, and if the spiritual son or daughter is offended, it's because they did not understand it very well. And there is not, it's not late to begin doing things right. It can start today. If that line is crossed, you have to make sure it's in place. Mm -hmm. There has to be some form of boundaries. Boundaries. Like you say, it's the job of the spirit of father to, yes. to draw the line, yes. you know, because there should not be any form of It should never, ever never. be. Amen. It's unhealthy. It's mm -hmm. even evil in some cases. Mm -hmm. I've seen some cases really bad. The competition is visible, is right there, all right? Where the spiritual uh, children will run to their father-in-law, oh, daddy, 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 baba, you know, just trying to take the space and push the other one aside and stuff. No, that, that is wrong. Or sometimes they can even invade your house mm -hmm. and show up in the house and the, the, the real kid, biological kid has no more place. And it's our responsibility to draw the line. And as I said, I make that mistake so many times, but thank God I have a wise daughter. She brought me back to line one and I'm doing what needs to be done in this perspective. But it's important. And I want to take advantage to talk to everybody who's listening. Probably I'm not your spiritual father. Probably somebody else is. You just come on this platform to watch. Please take notes. In fact, I will challenge you. You should be the people who are the nicest to the biological children. You should be the one who are the most amazing toward them. You should be the one clapping hand for them instead of competing against them. You should be the one giving them even gifts sometimes because of the sacrifice they are carrying upon themselves. That is a good ministry for spiritual children toward the biological children of the spiritual father. So anyway, <laughs> I think that is a little bit uh, straight but clear. Amen, amen. Yeah. This is from Tricia Simpson. How do you handle every man of God? <laughs> Calling you their spiritual child. <laughs> you know, that one... Uh, don't we have... Don't we only have one spiritual father yeah. and others are teachers? Yeah. Tricia uh, Simpson, thank you for that question. Uh, it is a very mature question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if a man of God came and said, listen to me, all right? The same way you see an elderly person sometimes who can say, oh, papa. And the same way sometimes an elderly person can call you my daughter. Right, so we understand that it is not a spiritual father order, right? It's not an order and son or daughter uh, uh, order. It can be just because they are elderly. Then you say, "My daughter, all will be well. It's okay." But if it is begin to build a relationship in that direction, uh, there's nothing wrong for you to say, you know, uh, Papa, Pastor, uh, I feel like man of God. I feel like relating to you is that but i'm not feeling this sonship yet i will put a yet on it is wisdom to say so again is to avoid conflict is to avoid somebody being hurt tomorrow mm -hmm. or in some case if you don't know them you don't care you don't need to adjust it because you see them once in a while and that's okay but if it's a person you see regularly and he relate to you like that all the time i think Sometimes if you don't feel it and it's always they say it, you feel like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you can mention it. Communication is key. It's important to talk about it because that's a violation of Very who important. you are, of your space. And it's a, it's a place that you want to give to somebody yes. you believe is yes. in that place. It's mm -hmm. important to speak, amen. Um, because I've seen it often where men or women of God or where even God would speak to you and me and say, this is your spiritual child. Yes. And then out of lack of wisdom, you go, you impose. God spoke to me that you are my son in the Lord. Yes. I, and I, I don't think as minister we should. God tells you so you know. You can position yourself yes. until that child or whatever is ready of course. to receive you or open up to you in that place and position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you the, know? the key is love here. Mm -hmm. All right? We have this as a common denominator is to love. Pastor, you should love. Mentor, you should love. Teacher, you should love. Pastor, you should. Apostle, you should love. Father, you should love. Out of that relationship of love, 
that is a common denominator, yet so strong. Every other relationship will define themselves on their own. On their own. Sometimes I had, for example, in somebody who took me out and said, you know, uh, God put this on my heart to come into the perspective to be your daughter. It touched me. You know why it touched me? Because I knew in my spirit this one, I will pull her out of the miry clay and set up upon the rock. It was a beautiful story. There's nothing wrong with that. If you feel comfortable to do that, just do it. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. But nevertheless, don't let anybody impose something to you on a regular basis. That's not right. Mm. Yeah, it's a violation. It's a violation. Yeah. Amen. This one is from Steve. For the young men and women from broken families, what is your view on the role of the church and giving them father figures and spiritual fathers? Can someone have a spiritual father in the church, but have a father figure outside? Example, coach, teacher, boss who mentors you. Of etc. course, mm -hmm. 100%. Now, the church is a family. The church is a place of healing. The church is a place of restoration. I'll give some examples. There are many uh, places in the world where they have lost their fathers. For example, in the United States, uh, a lot of the fathers were not there, they're in jail or in some places where they've been genocide, you know, a lot of people have become orphans the next day. So they never really have the opportunity to live in the mm -hmm. confine of a family. So the church always need to define very clearly the boundaries. In other words, what they will make available to help those people who don't have biological children to have a father figure that will help them, but through boundaries, through boundaries, they need to know that you are not the biological father, even though he passed away. You did not adopt them, biologically speaking. They still need to know that. You can reach to them and embrace them and support them and uh, lift them up just like a father will do. But it's important they understand you're not replacement of the spiritual father. Now you can have a spiritual father and then still have a mentor. Why? Because mentorship means somebody who's gone ahead of you who is teaching you something. A mentor is more of a teacher than a father. It's very important here. So you can go in electronic and then you are an engineer and now you need somebody who has been ahead of you who is a professional engineer to help you. That person is a mentor to you. Your father, your spiritual father does not have knowledge in engineering. There's nothing he can teach you in that domain. And therefore, we can have those many tutors. Those are the ones that 1 Corinthians 4.15 is talking about. So yes, you can have your spiritual father and have father figures as type of mentors in different domains, depend on your pursuits. Amen. Amen. All right, this one is from Samira. As a spiritual father, do you, do you are you supposed to stick only on a spiritual relationship with your spiritual sons? Where should be the boundaries? As a spiritual father, if you stand always in a... So, do yeah. we talk about the matter of the spiritual thing or... Yes. Now, when you are a spiritual father, of course, the primary place, it is on spiritual things as a first boundary. Now, as the relationship develop, the sons or the daughter can give you room in certain areas of their life where you can speak into it. But it's not the father who imposes it onto them in any form. At the end of the day... It is to start with the spiritual boundaries and let relationship open up the rest unto you and him. That's right. Relationship always. So the room you give to your spiritual father is what that what it takes. She should take. That's right. Not, yes. He, he doesn't come in and feel like and give himself that place. No, it's a violation. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they always need to be that respect, that honor, that place of liberty where you are invited in not you forcing yourself in. That's right. But relationship can grow the boundaries, enlarge the boundaries of access mm -hmm. and exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is really inevitable. Yeah. Because you're really navigating your life with that person. Of course. You know, so. Of course. You end up at the end checking all mm -hmm. the children are doing, all you're doing with your marriage, mm -hmm. all you're doing with that. You know, all things are going. Because you realize out of the relationship that is spiritual, related to a calling or a purpose, life is a whole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it has to be done through the development of genuine, clear, authentic relationship based on love, 
honor and, and respect boundaries. and healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. Don't rush it. Mm -hmm. Let the relationship do it naturally. Amen, amen. This one is from Rafaela. How can husbands, bracket spiritual fathers, set boundaries with their spiritual children, specifically single women? Okay, that's a very good question. When it's come to that, because of single woman and a father, it is a gender issue. We have a woman and we have a wife. What we need to do it is to talk to those people and say, listen, you cannot relate it to this person in that perspective because you're not just only a daughter, but you're also a wife of somebody or you're also a woman of somebody. For me personally, the Bible said, for the pure in the heart, there is no law. Nevertheless, the appearance of evil is extremely important. Mm. All right? So we need to live our life always realizing we are models and people are watching. What you can handle does not mean that's what you should leave because mm. somebody else is watching who cannot handle such. So it become again the responsibility of the spiritual father to draw the line and put healthy boundaries. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right, I think we're gonna stop right now. But <laughs> yeah. I would like we do ministry, amen. Uh, because that that uh, orphan spirit is something that's really real. Yes. And a lot of, uh, you know, people of God are, are struggling, and uh, one of the desire of every human be mm -hmm. being is to belong. You wanna belong, amen. And sometimes because you so much wanna belong, and uh, especially if you carry that orphan spirit. Yes. You'll find yourself, if you are around the wrong people, they can take advantage, they can take advantage yeah. of you. Mm. And that's where abuse happens. That's where, you know, control happens. Yes. And we have seen it so many times uh, in the course of our ministry, where we've seen people being hurt, wounded, yes. taken advantage of. Mm. And so we want to minister to Ma that, minister to you, because I want God to bring mm. healing. Every mm. relationship should mm. be healthy yes. for it to fulfill the mandate of God yes. upon upon uh, the earth in our lives amen Hallelujah. and uh, and I want to stress a, a very important point uh, for me like you said we need to be patient when I got born again I wanted spiritual parents and uh, and and it it took a long time up to now I can't tell you that I have a spiritual father because mm. God hasn't revealed it to me. Yes. So, and then I'm not in hurry. And in the beginning, in there hurry. was a sense of trying to just to connect. Mm. And the more mature I'm becoming, the more I don't feel the need. I still would love to, There's a, but the need is not the same, you know? And uh, I remember as I was looking for a spiritual mother, although this is not the subject of this conversation, and uh, this woman of God really impacted me in, uh, in her ministry. And, uh, and I started feeling, wow, this woman is my spiritual mom. Until God confronted me and spoke to me. And he showed me exactly who's my spiritual mom. And he said, this woman, she's not. And I was so shocked that God would take the time to yes, show me who's that person he is. Will. Although that person is not yet in my life. But God was just telling me it's a matter of it's time a and start connecting to her yes. teaching yes. and her, her ministry. Just to say, listen to me, God knows what you need. Yes. And in the right time, he will fulfill the, the, the deepest desire in your heart so, so, so that we can have healthy relationships. Very amen. powerful. And amen. So uh, I'm just going to put uh, worship. So we can minister to the people of God. I think it's very important. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you. So. If you are here, you feel like mm. you have an orphan spirit. Mm -hmm. You feel like you don't belong yes. somewhere. Yeah. You feel like you want to connect. Yeah. I want to connect, but yes. I feel alone. I don't belong. Today and we want to minister to you. That's what the orphan spirit does. Mm -hmm. You show up in the church and people are wondering, you know, I don't. I can't connect with anybody. There's no love in this church, uh, you know, because you are looking for a place to belong, to be acknowledged, and so on. And because you don't even realize that you have an orphan spirit, you begin to point fingers and it turns into a calamity. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ, <inaudible> under this anointing, the word of the Lord said in Matthew chapter 3, it said, This is my son and woman, I put all my affection. 
Father, we come, we break that spirit of the orphan in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, we we'll uplift this person from the place of loneliness. We uplift this person from the place of abandonment. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Abandonment is not your portion. We break the yoke of rejection over your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, thank you. Thank you for your love. For your love that is poured over the heart of this individual. Thank you for the pleasure of the Lord that is revealed in their heart. Thank you for rooting them in you, O oh God, by your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for healing in the heart of the people. Healing in the heart of the people. Those who have been wounded in church. Those who have been disappointed in church. Those who felt that they did not count. They didn't have a place to belong. Those who did not feel accepted in any form. Father, in the name of Jesus, let healing come to their heart. Let healing come to their heart. Mend the broken heart in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Makola Masia Mataya. Breto lo marike tele barasu tokobaya. Felerian do rosipa lakateba sopere amatos. Thank you, Father. We give you thanks, O God. Thank you for supernatural wisdom to be imparted to every father on this this line. Every spiritual father, every spiritual daughter, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Mm. We put an end to every form of spiritual abuse on your life in the mighty name of Jesus. We release you from that spirit of control, control of men over your life. In the thank mighty you, name of in Jesus, Jesus mighty name. Father God, I thank you because this person listening to me yes. has a voice, yes. has a strong voice, yes. has a decision, yes. has a choice yes. in their life yes. to be, to become, and to connect mm. with whoever they want to connect yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. So every spirit of man mm. that has come to abuse, take control yes. spiritually over yes. their life, of someone on this line, mm. I just rebuke it and in the break name of yoke. Jesus. We break the, the yoke of this from man in Jesus' name. Every soul tie yeah. that is not from God, yeah. we just break we it. We break it in the in name the of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, that you came to set the captive free. We release the freedom in to Jesus become mighty name. who they are called to be in Hallelujah. the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said, I have come that you may not. Remain orphan anymore. Yes, Lord. Yeah, that's what he said. I have come that you may not remain in mm. the category of orphans. Mm, 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 mm. He has cast his love abroad on your heart to give you confidence and assurance that you belong. That the spirit cry out within you, Abba, mm. Father. Let that bond be secure right now in mm. Jesus' mighty name. Mm, 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 mm. I feel like praying against intimidation. Yes. Because there's some time where you've been so intimidated, you become a slave to a spiritual father. You mm. become like a, you lose your own identity. You lose your own being. You, mm. you turn into something else. You lose sight of your own authenticity. And father, in the name of Jesus, I break that spirit of intimidation. I break that spirit of slavery. I break that spirit of control. In the name of Jesus Christ. I would like also to pray again the spirit of rebellion. Of sons. That refuse to understand the covering and the authority of the father. Bringing dishonor. Father in the name of Jesus. We break this pro witchcraft that rebellion Jesus. in the name in of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Name. You say in Malachi chapter 4 that John the Baptist in the anointing of Elijah mm -hmm. will come in the last days and turn the heart of the father to the son and the heart of the son to the fathers. Lord, let that be so. Unless you come and bring a curse to the earth. Father, we nullify every curse Amen. and we bring restoration. Jesus, we bring reconciliation. Jesus, we bring a connection Jesus, by the spirit yes, between the yes, fathers and the son. It, it, in the yes, name yes, of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name, I know we are praying, but I, I, I need to say this. This is so profound. Listen to me. 
Mm. The one who prepared the coming of the Messiah, mm. John the Baptist, he came in the spirit of Elijah. Mm. Elijah performed 14 miracles. Yet John the Baptist never performed even one mm. in scripture. The scripture does not take note of any miracle that was performed by John the Baptist. Ah! But how can he have the spirit of Elijah? Why? Why the one who preparing the coming of Messiah has to have the spirit that turned the heart of the father to the son and to the son to the father? That is the demonstration of the order of father and son by which God released blessing. Mm. Why not Moses, the great intercessor, the one who are more than the prophet, who sat and talked with God face to face? Why not Jeremiah, the weeping prophet? Why not Abraham, the father of faith? Why not the spirit of Abraham to prepare the way of Messiah? Because as far as scripture is concerned, Elijah is the only father who gave a double portion to his son. Mm. And heaven honored that. Mm. Mm. This mandate, this thing of father and son, is not a joke. It's for a benediction. It's for transgenerational blessing of increase. This thing of, we call the order of father and son, is not just for some people to build their ego and cross some people and some to feel hurt and some to do this. We are perverting all these things and missing the real point. The real point is a place where Transgenerational blessings are communicated in increase. Because Elijah was the only person who gave a double portion to his son. God pulled his spirit upon John the Baptist, not to do miracles, but to turn the heart of the father to the sons and the son to the fathers. This is too deep. Listen to me again. The greatest strategy of the devil is not to destroy you personally but is to break the bridge between fathers and sons. Because he knows that's where generational blessings are communicated. It's through that order of father and son. When he breaks the bridge, we go back again to our another beginning. God never intended to have more than one Genesis. That's right. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. You know, today, you can enter the ministry and start struggling or you can enter the ministry and have the upper hand because you had a father. Because you can have a transfer of blessing, of knowledge and wisdom, and encounters already on your account, accredited to you, that allowed you not to start from the bottom, but to start already with a substance. Mm. Abraham was a father. He slept under the stars. But his children did not sleep under the stars. They sleep in houses they didn't build and possess vineyards they didn't cultivate because of a generational blessing that come from their father to them. It was an increasing. Our sons had to do greater than us. In 1900, Azusa, the Holy Ghost fell. The Pentecostal movement was born. Am I right? That's why we speak in tongues. But was it the first time that the Holy Ghost fell? In the book of Acts chapter 2, did not the Holy Ghost fail? Did people didn't speak in tongues? So where the tongue went? Why God has to wait 1900 years to revisit the earth for the tongue to come back? It's because the devil was able to break the bridge between the father and the son. So those wisdom and impartation were not communicated. And therefore most sons have their own genesis of new beginning. That's not God best. God has set an order in place so you don't have your own genesis of new beginning, but you can pick up from the riches, from the blessing, from the encounters, from the anointing that your father has secured in his time that he can impart to you and make the pathway easier for you, give you keys that you don't need to go learn on your own. So this thing is not about ego. It's about generational transfer. This is not about ego. This is about generational transfer of blessing in increasing way. That's why Elisha, 
did 28 miracles and his father, 14, double portion. Listen to me. The greatest miracle of Elijah was not to call on fire. The greatest miracle of Elijah was not to divide the Jordan. The greatest miracle of Elijah was not to kill the priest of Baal. The greatest miracle of Elijah was to grow a son. That was his greatest miracle. Wow. His son was his greatest miracle. Not fire coming from heaven. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Sons, daughters, fathers. There is a baton in the hand of every father. You can die with it. Mm. You know, you want to know something sad? Elijah was a father. And he passed a double portion to Elijah. Elisha. Elisha did not pass any portion. He died with his anointing. Because he has a bad son called Gehazi. It break down the release of inheritance and blessing until his father anointing is waking up dead people in the grave. We don't want that. We want to pass blessing to sons and daughters. May the Lord bless you. That's really what I wanted to mention. I felt it was important that I mentioned. This is not about who's wrong, who did this and who didn't do that. Beyond all the questions I answer, beyond all the questions you still have, that, so, that will not even have an answer in the next 10 years, and probably mm -hmm. sometime for your lifetime, mm -hmm. you need to understand the real deal, mm -hmm. right? Beyond all the noise and the, mm -hmm. and the questions, and beyond all the crowd, I, I wanted to shrink out and tell you why. Why father sons? Jesus said, I did nothing unless I see my father do. He said, the work I do is not me. It is my father who sent me to do this work. Mm -hmm. Great principle in that posture. Mm -hmm. He said, Father, glorify me. Do something amazing that these people will know I'm not doing this on my own. Mm -hmm. It's because I have a father. Mm -hmm. Joseph prevailed because he had a father. Mm -hmm. Timothy prevailed because he had a father. Titus prevailed because he had a father. Mark refused to line up with a father. Nobody ever heard from Mark anymore in the Bible. From whence he separated from Father Apostle Paul. God's best way to communicate blessing is through the order that he has established himself of father and son. That's why he is called the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, and Jacob. Here is the order of father and son where generational blessing can flow freely. Mm -hmm. Ministry should be an overflow out of that order. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of that order. It's not always punishing. It's not always hurtful. It can be very beautiful. It can be an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I am blessed, Father, because I have phenomenal children. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. I take pride in it. It's allowed me to stand at any gate and speak with boldness without shame. Mm -hmm. And some call me daddy, some don't. And they don't have to. Mm -hmm. but I know by the Spirit, and we know one another, that we are connected in the order of Father and Son. And that's what mattered the most, than making just noise. There's a lot of people who can call you daddy, daddy, but they're not your son. Mm -hmm. It can build up your ego and make you feel special. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's nonsense. It is noise. It's wasting of time. And make sure you don't take what belongs to Isaac and give it to Ishmael, because he can sing better your name. We have to bring true alignment in the kingdom. And now I'm speaking as a father and an apostolic head. Mm -hmm. The church of God needs a realignment mm -hmm. and a reformation when it's come to the doctrinal truth and the principle that we have inherited from our forefathers. We have to revisit them because the world has become a crazy market where everybody makes noise. Mm -hmm. When David killed Goliath, King Saul asked, whose son is he? Whose son is he? Is it because he doesn't care about David? Mm. It's because he traced him. He want to trace him. Where his DNA is? Who raised this guy? Where does he belong? Whose son is he? When the horse of Israel in the fire 
took Elijah, the only cry that came from the heart of Elisha was my father, my father. That was not a call of social. It was not social. It was not cultural, I mean. It is the spirit within him that called out on what have connected them mm -hmm. that was not, he was not able to express before mm -hmm. until there was an intensity of spirituality when he was living. He saw him face to face, never what vision in vision. Here's what the father does. He love, he cover, mm -hmm. he protect, he look for the welfare of his son. Mm -hmm. He doesn't take advantage, he doesn't abuse him, he doesn't mm -hmm. castrate him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't sodomite him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't draw pleasure from him and not care for him. Come on. That's what a father does. Jacob was a father. He clothed Joseph with a, a garment of multiple co colors to express love. History said he saw it himself, mm -hmm. though he has a lot of slaves, mm -hmm. because he wanted love to be into it, engrave, engrave love into it. Mm -hmm. So the father gave love to his son. And what does the son give to the father? Mm. Honor. That's why when Noah was drunk, his sons that were wise and honorable cover him with their garment. Father has garment. Sons have garment. Mm. The garment of a father is a garment of love that will build you up and make you prevail in life. Give you an identity. Establish you. And make you belong to somebody. Mm -hmm. Number two. Children have a garment. It's a garment of honor that is done to cover the nakedness of their father, not to shame him. If we work in the confines of those two things, love and honor, we will fulfill the great order of father and sons to the glory of God. Every son will be tested in their life. Jesus Christ, I, I don't know, baby. I, no, I no, need go to for make. it, go for it, go for it. Jesus Christ was baptized in the Jordan. When he came out, the voice of the father established the identity of the son. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people today, you are talented, you are anointed, but your father's voice has not established your identity. Mm -hmm. That's why you are still wondering, what should I do? What is in my life? What is my purpose? Who am I? My, and so on. The voice of the father established the identity of the son. This is my son publicly, in whom I am well pleased. I call my children, my daughter, my son publicly. I don't hide it. We, this is not a hiding story. And right away, the Holy Ghost took him, the, the Spirit took him in the wilderness. Watch now. Watch me now. Watch me now. In the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. Temptation after temptation. Turn this stone into rock. Jump, and the angel will capture you. Bow to me, and I'll give you all the riches of the world. Jesus said, no. But you know, even though it was three temptations... It was only one because every time he said, if you are the son of God, yet few minutes ago in the desert, in the Jordan, God said, this is my son. And the devil now is asking him right away. Is he really your son? Just like the way he did with Adam and Eve. Did God really say it? the greatest temptation of a son? It is that question. Is he really your father? Mm. If you are the son. Mm. That's where your identity will be challenged. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Because in every son, there's a father. Mm -hmm. If you misbehave as a son, your fatherhood will misbehave. Mm -hmm. Because the greatest son do the greater father. And in all things, somebody will say, but if I'm being abused, what do I do? Sit down with that father and talk. And tell him, Papa, something is not right here. I don't feel myself anymore. It's like I'm lost in you, and that should not be. Mm -hmm. I want to gain the integrity of my person, who I am. Yeah, you can do that. God bless you. And uh, I want to thank my host. I don't know who was the host here, but I had to give you the fullness of it in my heart so I can go to bed really sleeping good. But thank you, baby. Yeah, thank you guys so much. You're welcome. <laughs> That's my job, just to push the right button so that she can talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope you are blessed. We love you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have any other subject, I think we had put it on Facebook. You want we, we, we addressed. I think these conversations are very important. Yes. And uh, so just write it down and then we'll 
time allowing us we'll just go deal with them and talk about them okay to my family cross point fellowship yes, so. love you so much to the <laughs> cross point family you're the best and uh, our internet viewers uh we love you so much i hope our ministry is blessing you yes. this conversation will take you far in life so you can be a blessing to wherever god uh, leads you to yes. so we'll see you again god bless you bye, bye